Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our fifth lesson on uh, airframes, engines, and systems. We're going to be discussing lubricating oils and systems. Let's talk about viscosity. Viscosity is the uh, physical property, which is the resistance to flow. Something, uh, a fluid with high viscosity is thick, such as molasses, and a fluid with low viscosity is, uh, is quite thin, flows easily, such as gasoline. Here are some, uh, uh, on the left side, we can see some, the viscosity of different uh, fluids. And uh, in Pascal seconds, this is the, uh, what the uh, units break down to, and then, uh, and then how things look like on a molecular structure on the right-hand side. So a number of different grades of oils that you might in, uh, encounter with the aircraft so you might wonder like why do i need to know this well uh, aircraft actually go through a lot of oil a lot more than a car and so it's uh, important that you put the correct oil in uh, because you will something that you'll learn to do as, uh, as a pilot as a student pilot is adding oil to the aircraft so we when we talk about grades of oils it's given in sae or sable viscosity so let's say sae 50 or sable viscosity 80 uh, this is called the 80 second oil. It's the time for the oil to flow. SAE is 100 is a higher viscosity than SAE 80. An example of common grades, we might use 120 oil in the summer. So it's going to be uh, considerably thicker than 80 weight uh, oil that we might use in the winter, which will be thinner and flow easier. A lot of uh, common oils now are what are called multi-viscosity. They change their, uh, or they retain their viscosity with temperature change. So they're always kind of the same thickness, no matter how warm or cold it is. So an example is the SAE 20W50, uh, it's XC, let's say that's made by Philips. It's the most common one that you'll probably find. And it acts like an SAE 20 oil in the winter, but also acts like an SAE 50 oil in the summertime. It's important that you only add the same type of oil that is currently in the aircraft uh, when you are adding oil. You generally cannot mix oils. Uh, if you absolutely need to, you do have to check with the manufacturer of the oil to see if, if it can be added to anything else. And if you want to find out what kind of oil is in the airplane currently, so what kind of oil to add, just check in the journey logbook, look for the last oil change, and the uh, aircraft maintenance engineer should have indicated that. Oil has four purposes. Uh, it is intended to cool the aircraft, so it removes excess heat. There's also an oil cooler, so it, uh, it helps cooling the aircraft. It seals between the piston walls and cylinders. It lubricates by creating an oil film between moving parts, uh, preventing uh, friction from wearing down the surfaces. And it's also responsible for flushing. Typically, uh, an engine will produce some contaminants, and you will see that during an oil change, the oil will be black. Then you do the oil change and uh, if you have an oil filter, you remove that and put fresh oil in and with it comes the contaminants uh, with it out of the oil filter. Let's discuss some methods of lubricating the engine. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is the splash method. Uh, this is really old and primitive. I don't know of any aircraft that have the, an oil system that uses a splash method, but on the bottom of the connecting rod and the crankshaft, there's kind of an oil dipper, like a little cup or a scoop. And then as the engine uh, runs, it just splashes oil everywhere. Uh, I can't imagine this being terribly effective. Uh, it's more common in gearboxes. Some aircraft have reduction gearboxes and you don't need a force feed system. You just need to bathe the gears in oil. And more commonly, we have the force feed method of lubrication. And the way a force feed method works is uh, you have an oil sump and uh, in the oil sump is an oil strainer and then an oil pump and a filter. And then uh, the, the oil gets pushed uh, at a high pressure through orifices, let's say in the crankshaft to lubricate between the crankshaft and the connecting rod. And then eventually that oil drips its way back into the oil sump. We can have a, a wet sump system where the, uh, the oil is located kind of in a tank beneath the engine. That's probably what you're most uh, used to if you look at uh, an aircraft engine. You can also have a dry sump 
which is the oil tank is separate from the case. The case just collects the oil and then pumps it into a supply tank. This is most common on aerobatic airplanes uh, where uh, you need a, you always need a kind of a pressure, an amount of oil. And if, if you're upside down, the wet sump would just soak the, the uh, engine full of oil and you, and you need a way to get it somewhere. So I'll just show you how these look like here in the next slide. On the left, a, an example of a wet sump. This looks like a Cessna 150. You can see here, it's just kind of a tank and a filler cap and everything kind of sits in there. On the right is a dry sump. This is a uh, an oil tank that's connected or just attached to the firewall and uh, and and just will, al will always have oil uh, supplying the engine no matter what attitude you're in. Oil systems have uh, what's called an oil breather or breather vent uh, to vent overpressure oil overboard. Uh, if you see a bit of oil dripping from this breather tube, that's normal, especially in the winter. You want to be uh, careful, though, that it doesn't become obstructed with ice or other contaminants. Uh, if that happens, what you'll end up seeing is oil all over everywhere else because the oil can't vent from the breather tube. And so it will find other little crooks and crannies in the engine to uh, vent itself. Uh, the purpose of an oil filter is to remove uh, metal contamination. This is how an oil filter looks like. On the left, they're quite a bit bigger than an oil filter that you would see in a car. The other thing is they have a nice hex head on the top, so you can just go in with a one-inch socket and spin them off as opposed to a car having to use those stupid oil filter wrenches that never seem to work very well for me. What uh, aircraft maintenance engineers do is they take that oil filter, they cut it open and make sure that uh, there's no contaminants in it. And if you look on the right side, see all those contaminants? Uh, that is an indication that unfortunately that engine needs to be overhauled, needs to be torn down and rebuilt because some part of the engine did not get proper lub properly lubricated. Perhaps it wasn't flown in a long time and rusted. And then when they started it up, that ru those rust flakes came off. Well, the that metallic, uh, particles get into the oil and then the oil filter takes them off. And so if you cut open an oil filter, that's not what you wanna see. That means you've got a big 25 to $30,000 repair bill coming up, or maybe even higher if you have a big six cylinder. An oil cooler is a, a small liquid air heat exchanger. So it allows the transfer of heat from the engine, the oil to the atmosphere. You can see there's a couple oil, uh, filters, or sorry, oil coolers right here in the bottom, on the left side, the bottom of the image, and then on the right side, kind of uh, right on the, uh, by the engine mount here. Purposes of lubricating oil is sealing, cooling, lubricating, and flushing. A viscosity is the oil's resistance to flow. A higher SAE is a higher viscosity, and therefore be more viscous, so more resistant to flow. Most light aircraft engines use a wet sump force feed system, and you can only use the same type of oil in an engine unless approved by the manufacturer. What type of oil is most likely to be used in the summer months? Uh, SAE 120 because it is more viscous, uh, SAE 80 because it is more viscous, SAE 120 because it is more viscous, and SAE 80 because it is more viscous. Correct answer is SAE 20 because it is more viscous. So you want a thicker oil in the summer months so when it heats up it doesn't become really thin. During your walk around you notice that you are low on oil. You look in the journey logbook and notice that at the last oil change the engine was replenished with SAE 80 oil. You cannot find any SAE 80 oil in the hangar but only 20 W50. You may a not add the SAE or not add the 20 W50 oil B, not add the 20W50 oil unless the aircraft manufacturer specifies that you can mix oil. C, not add the 20W50 oil unless the oil manufacturer specifies that you can mix oils. D, B and C are correct. Correct answer are B and C. So you can um, mix oils, but only if uh, the manufacturer or the oil manufacturer specifies that you can. This concludes this lesson on lubricating oils. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next lesson.